Previously on Animat's Classic Reviews. <laughs> Happy to see you here, Animat. You? You did this? <laughs> of course I kidnapped you. Remember that disturbing animated films video we did a while back? Great video, good times. The point is, I need you to revisit one of them. But not just a random one that we've talked about. I mean the most disturbing one of them all. That's right. We're going back to Korea to revisit one very unfortunate middle school. <laughs> <laughs> The King of Pigs. Let's be honest, school life can really suck. I'm sure there are plenty who have fond memories of their academic years and did well for themselves in their school social structure, but more often than not, they can leave some pretty unpleasant experiences to the point that they can be scarring. Not many movies have the courage to highlight the dark side of being a student, since most are made for the purpose of escapism. But then there's The King of Pigs, a 2011 South Korean animated film that held nothing back to expose the problems of the educational system that people aren't comfortable to talk about. It's far from being easily recognized by the public, but you might have heard of this in videos that talk about disturbing cartoons. I remember when I did a collab video where the other guy told me all about this movie and has this fascinating perspective on it where he was just so mesmerized by its themes and the deeper layers of its disturbing nature that are more than just a few shocking scenes. It's just so interesting that, honestly, I wanted to share what he told me. Which is exactly why I'm teaming up with him again for this review. So please welcome my co-reviewer of today, That Creepy Reading. Thanks for the introduction. I mean, you're stuck here and have to do this because life happens, which coincidentally is what King of Pigs is all about. When I started making the disturbing animated films list, I went in with the idea that all art has value, even if it's disgusting or is visually ugly. Feeling uncomfortable and unnerved is a valid thing and an experience that is sometimes worth seeking out. I compiled a massive list of films that people found to be the most disturbing. One by one, I watched over 30 films, many of which never even made it into the video, but I would have liked to talk about, like the French film Fears of the Dark or Fears La Noire, which is full of French experimental animation that I still don't quite understand. So believe me when I say, I never felt so intensely sick than when I watched King of Pigs. Sure, Where the Dead Go to Die has much more disturbing material in it, but King of Pigs treats its subject matter with respect, while also being morbid and somehow down to earth in some aspects. So now that we'll be looking back at those brutal years of middle school, will this teach us a valuable lesson that we will never forget? Or is the movie itself also filled with systemic corruption? Let's find out- Wait, 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 hold on a minute! Why am I even reviewing this? I already got like so many other projects that I need to work on, not to mention all the Patreon requests that I gotta do. And how the fridge did I even get here? Because this movie emotionally disturbed me and I want to talk about it again. Now I'm using you as a mouthpiece. I can't afford healthcare, my friends won't respond to my text messages, and I'm socially awkward as hell. But why me? Because I've been watching you for like a decade, and this parasocial relationship needs to go to the next level. Now, stop questioning and start talking about the story. Okay, okay, jeez, um, oh, right, <clears throat> the story. I can safely say that there is nothing pleasant about this feature at all. And by pleasant, I mean that the movie never goes in a direction that could give the audience even a little hint of hope. In fact, the picture literally starts with one of the main characters crying alone in the shower. Because his company went completely bankrupt and he just killed his wife. Shocking, yes, but it only gets worse from there. This is the part of the film that made me realize that there was something different here. 
And that's when I got my roommates and we all decided to make a night out of watching this. The way they present this killing is cinematic and requires no voiceover to understand. It's just ugly, shocking visuals and raw emotion that clue the audience in on what actually is happening. The story of the movie is actually about two old friends, Kyung Min and Jang Suk. Reunited after a long time as they look back to their early years in middle school. While it was mostly filled with bullies constantly taking advantage of them. Not to mention everyone around them as well. What they talk about the most is their time with a boy named Chul, who shows them how to stand up to the brutes in his uh, own unique way. By this point, the story could have gone in the typical direction of teaching its audience to stand up to bullies. Or present an idealized message that shows how good people get vindicated and evil people get punished. However, the movie decided to do something completely different. Chul's way of defense is not the kind that you'll find in any anti-bullying PSA. What he teaches to John Suk and Kyung Min is that the most effective way to fight against the bad guys is to sink even lower than them by becoming a monster. <laughs> In a way, it doesn't want to spread any anti-bullying message, but rather to highlight the bigger picture of what is enabling bullies to do what they want and all fingers point to the school system. In the American school system, many schools boast a zero tolerance policy, which is what I grew up with. Zero tolerance, of course, translating to turning a blind eye to uneven enforcement. Sure, a kid may have thrown the first punch, but if you decide to defend yourself, both you and the bully get in trouble, which only hurts everyone involved, not only academically, but if you have parents that don't quite understand the situation, that can be a huge emotional burden at home too. However, this is even worse in places like Japan and, well, Korea, which is where this film takes place in, which is even more busted and involves a lot more greasing of the wheels. I have heard plenty of horror stories where adults in Japan often become complicit in enabling the abuse through corporal punishment. They have this corrupted hierarchy where those at the top are like dogs who ravenously get away with taking advantage of the weak, while the rest underneath them are like pigs who are only meant to get eaten by the dogs. But with Chul in the equation, sometimes all the pigs could do to not get eaten is to bite back. However, the old adage is still true, violence begets violence. Every emotionally cathartic beatdown Chol gives to the bullies only escalates the situation to a point of cartoonish absurdity, culminating in a scene where Chol is pulling a matrix and fighting several kids off with a knife on the roof of the school, which we as the audience want to root for Chol as he's the underdog protecting the weak, but as the film goes on, his methodology is criticized and stretched until he's literally trying to become a monster, metaphorically breaking from the role of protagonist in an attempt to become an antagonist. And in the end, he just can't do it. The film doesn't mince that the system is highly unfair, and the reason why some kids ended up resorting to violence is because they don't have any other choice. There are no options where peace can be used to solve the problem. Speaking of violence, there's no hiding that the feature can often get brutal. But for the purpose of the storytelling, it adds an additional layer of suspense to keep the mood constantly tense. Considering how the movie itself has the same temperament as one of those kids being pushed to the edge, it gives you this looming feeling that there will be grave consequences that will happen in the end. It would not be hard to recontextualize the violence in this film and screw up Chol's entire character. We, as the audience, want to see bad people get punished, the good guy winning, and fixing everything. Chol beats up a lot of people, but only usually does so in response to their violence and their bullying. Chol is not an aggressor, but the lengths that he takes is truly monstrous. There's no secret that one or some of these prominent characters are going to die. It's only a matter of who and how. 
It's also worth mentioning that the intensity really ramps up towards the end when it presents who the real monster of the movie is. And it even gets to the point where the movie becomes scary with how the boys push their vow for revenge to the extreme. <laughs> This is not a story for everyone. In fact, I'm sure its uncomfortable nature will detract a lot of people. But it does present an ugly truth about our reality. The boys end up huffing some sort of drug and killing a cat in cold blood. And most of the violence in this film, I should reiterate here, is enacted by kids. And I do mean like kids brutalizing each other and escalating everything to a breaking point. However, I would describe none of it as tasteless. All the violence in this film has a purpose, and its purpose is one that I personally find to be important. It's a story that not many of us want to hear, but it's one that is best to not ignore. And speaking of things that are hard to ignore, like, you know, kidnapping! Yeah, sorry, I know, I hate to harp on this issue again and again, but how did you even do that? Like. What is with that whole glitch transition? How did that even work? What did you even do? You know what? No, forget it. I don't even want to know. Yeah, sure, I could explain to you how I did this, but sometimes the fun of a story comes from the journey itself. Even if the ending isn't always pleasant, there's always something to learn, even from the most revolting ends. Revolting? Ending? Ending? What do you mean by ending? Well... What I mean is, the best stories always leave a bittersweet taste, and unfortunately, so does the animation in this film. <laughs> okay, okay, let's go and move on to the animation. Let's just go and uh, talk about the next thing. The animation. As it is a movie about kids in school, there's not a whole lot that the feature can do to go crazy with its animation. Actually, this is the kind of film that could only make the most with the materials that it had. And reportedly, this movie only had a budget of around $150,000. That's unimaginably low for an animated film, especially for 2011. But to its credit, it managed to make the animation work. This is not meant to insult or criticize the picture in any way, but what is primarily noticeable about its animation is that it is ugly. Since the themes and the personalities featured are more repulsive, then it makes sense to have the film look unappealing as well. While the animation is certainly unappealing from an outside looking in perspective, I will say that it at least does the job. When kids hit each other, you feel the impact. There is weight to this animation. And while this animation was made on the cheap, this is not cheap animation. Even the colors are all muted to emphasize the melancholy tone and how nothing about it is fun. Yes, the designs are technically meant to be more realistic, sharing the anime aesthetic to applying more subtlety to the character's movements and create some detailed backgrounds to show a modern suburban South Korea, but mostly around the school and the lower class areas. But in terms of the character designs, they want to make the people look as real as possible, but it gives them this uncanny style that makes them look more like angry adults. Especially the kids who sometimes look fine, like Chol, but then Jun Suk actually looks like a shrunk down version of his adult self, making him kind of like this weird chibi dude, which takes some getting used to. Regardless of their age or gender, everyone looks like they're just dealing with a bad day and want to be left alone. But to be fair, that is kind of the case with most of them. Now, considering that this movie is mostly grounded in reality, some may wonder if there even is a point to making this animated in the first place. Honestly, I definitely think so, because there are some scenes in which the characters see some surrealistic hallucinations to really get into their psyche, like seeing their subconscious get the best of them or highlighting what they have become. That and, well, this does feature a lot of kids getting abused and violently beating each other up, so it's best not to use real kids to act those scenes out. Besides, this may sound bad of me, but as gruesome as they can sometimes get, 
The action scenes where Chul fights back can be pretty cool and well choreographed. The hype nature from the Chul fight scenes are also undercut by the dark circumstances we are embroiled in. The animation, also shockingly enough, is likely cheaper than doing the same thing in live action. Sure, you can make a live action film that does all the same things, but to nail the mood, getting 20-ish good child actors, while also getting the set dressing, colors, framing, theme, aesthetic, and choreography that can convey the morbid, brutal nature of this story could be difficult on a budget of $150,000. Just imagine for a second that one hallway scene from Old Boy, but instead of it being like 30 adults beating the hell out of each other in one of the most glorious, epically choreographed fight scene ever, instead it was a bunch of children doing the same thing. Not that it can't be done, just that if the budget remained the same, there's no way it would have looked as good as this animation. So I think that was a good call on the director's end. Sometimes if you want to tell the story that you want to tell, you gotta do everything yourself, even from the visuals and framing. And this is a perfect example of that. If there is one criticism to give towards his visuals, it's how it often jumps mediums in a way that is not as subtle as it thinks. For most of the picture, the animation remains in 2D. However, it often feels like it wants to try out 3D that emulates its anime-like style, and not only does the effect not work in trying to cover its computer look, but it also lessens the value of its quality. Yes, I did say that the movie can make looking ugly work, but there is a difference between being ugly to set the mood and being ugly because they can't afford to make it look better. 내가 똥냄새 없애는 기막힌 방법을 알고 있거든? 아이고 똥냄새 몸이 다 나는 거지 에이, 똥이 거기 있으니까 아이고 I have seen worse animation, certainly and I have seen repulsive animation far more shocking but I have not seen shocking animation done like this with this much purpose which can carry you through the darker aspects of the movie. It's not every day when I say that the animation is repulsive, hard to look at, and kind of disgusting, and considering it mostly a good thing that helps enhance the picture. So, I have a question, and since I'm holding all the cards here, I feel like I can force this. If you had to compare King of Pigs to any other animated flick, what would you compare it to? I imagine that many people in the audience watching us today could potentially use that frame of reference. You know, that is a good question. Um, it's going to be pretty tricky, especially considering the uh, brutality and the overall tone of this. But the most that I could think of, I would say, is maybe the Richard Adams adaptations, you know, like uh, Watership Down and Plague Dogs. Anything else? Well, they're not really that well known, like uh, Consuming Spirits. Maybe it's such a beautiful day. You know, the kind that are not really well known amongst the mainstream, but the kind that I would like to have a much happier ending than those. At least in my experience, I guess it's just hard to find films in the animation sphere that are similar, at least in America. Which is why I think this film has a lot of character and is unique in its own way. I don't know, maybe I just need to explore more films and check out what there is to see. The Characters After what we've mostly described so far, I think it's safe to say that there are no good guys in this movie. There are main characters, but everyone in the cast is either a complete bad guy or just a horrible person. The only one who'd I consider to be a decent fellow is Chan Young, a student that gets a few scenes to highlight how he was once a top student before the bullies put him down in his place. But even he can stoop to dangerously low levels. <laughs> Ah! 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 
새끼가 새끼가 어디서 칼을 들이 병신 새끼 before we start labeling good guys and bad guys, I think it's important to remind everyone that the majority of this film focuses on characters who are kids, people who were forced to grow up way too early and as a result make decisions that are not only harmful to themselves, but everyone around them. Of course, at the end of the film we see these kids all grown up and yeah, it's not great seeing these systemic issues affect these men later in their lives. Don't get me wrong though, abusive and murderous behavior is never excusable, which makes this film all the more horrifying as you get to see what makes a good kid go bad, and considering what I'm constantly seeing on the news lately, even close to my hometown, maybe that's something that's worth exploring. Jong Suk and Kyung Min are two outcasts who are often the target of the bullies in their class. Where the former is raised in a poor family that starts to get fed up with their abuse of power while facing little to no consequences, and the latter is more of an emotional wreck who can often feel powerless. Since they are kids, they are very impressionable, and considering their position where they are stuck at the bottom of the school's hierarchy, they are willing to do anything to make the harassment stop. In fact, a lot of the problems these characters face are direct results of their parents' financial situation. Whether we're talking about the dirty, messed up way Kyung Min's dad chooses to make his above standard wealth, to Chol's complete lack of a family situation, down to Jun Suk and his sister feeling deep resentment towards everyone around them due to their family's below average wealth. These are stresses and pressures that affect the child cast in ways that they have no real frame of reference to contend with. And at least from that perspective, it's unfair. But what is possibly more interesting is when they are adults. This is when the consequences of their experience come to fruition and how the scars leave them with shorter tempers and more erratic behavior. But then there is the boy that changed their lives, Chul. This is the kind of kid who is at the bottom of the barrel and he knows it, so he pretty much has nothing to lose. Which is why he doesn't hesitate to stand up to those who are socially higher than him and beat them up. However, there is also a deep complexity with him where, because of how cruel life has been treating him, he developed this psychology that you can only get to the top if you become worse than everyone else. Where even the idea of taking someone's life doesn't sound like a big deal. <laughs> And yet, there is still that little part of him that isn't completely soulless. Later on, the film goes into his relationship with his parents and how even at their lowest point, they can play a significant influence on Chul and who he becomes. Chol's dad is not around, which Chol resents, and his mom is always working, leaving Chol alone and unsupervised in an impoverished household. This is why he thinks no one cares about him, because he comes home to nothing and believes that he is nothing. So when his mom shows even the slightest amount of concern for him, that shatters that worldview, and a single act of kindness undoing months of a downward spiral. These are not the kind of characters you want to hang out with, or especially not to get on their bad side unless you want a quick trip to the hospital. However, it's not hard to imagine how they can feel a bit relatable when we'd be at our lowest point, and how they reflect that going to the dark side can sometimes feel more alluring than the peaceful option. I'm not gonna lie, this is one of the darkest, depressing, brutal, and most disturbing animated feature I've ever seen. And yet, going through that whole experience was honestly worth it. The King of Pigs is a reflection on the harsh reality of the social system in schools that is brave enough to talk about what very few want to even think of. Everything in this picture is unpleasant and uncomfortable, 
The story puts the audience right in the perspective of the bullied kids. The animation is somber and can get quite violent, and the characters can range from hateably cruel to downright terrifying. I dropped out of high school due to bullying, and this film hits a certain spot that kinda still feels raw. Kids are often just mean because they have yet to become a person, which has devastating results when those in charge have an incentive to turn a blind eye. Bullying, family issues, lack of wealth all tie into this vicious cycle and are complicated issues to untangle and deal with properly, which only makes everything worse. The idea that no one cares about you and that the only thing that matters is getting payback is a dark yet appealing one that this film indulges heavily in. However, no matter who you are, you deserve love, life, and belonging. Which, if you just knew where to look, you can find. And that's why this film kind of fucked me up. I'll say right now that this is not a movie for everyone. If you can't stomach bloody violence, can't handle the heavy themes, or don't like the uncomfortable feeling of us just explaining this movie to you, then it's best to just avoid this movie. However, if you think you can tolerate its heaviness, then this will be worth the experience. This film is not for everyone, especially young kids. Oddly enough, if you can get permission from your parents as a teen, or if you are a parent, I suggest watching this as a cautionary tale. This film is disturbing, and sometimes it's just good to be disturbed. It's what lets you know that something is wrong, and situations presented in this film, while exaggerated for story purposes, these situations are not too far off from the real world. I suppose what matters is the feeling the film gives you. If you're not looking to be morbidly depressed by a heart-wrenching, tragic, bloody, violent tale, then yeah, maybe give this one a skip. I do want to separate this from other disturbing films because unlike other movies, especially in the animation sphere that are gross and disgusting for its own sake, King of Pigs has a important message and something to say. For me, it's cathartic knowing that no matter where you go in the world, everything sucks, and while my high school experience may be terrible, I'm glad that I survived and continue to live past it because it does get better and it's stupid to miss out on something just because of someone else. Not to mention, I got to meet and befriend some of the coolest dudes on this side of the net, like Animat, whose content has inspired me quite a bit. Hence the kidnapping. So this is it, huh? We're done with the review and now I'm gonna meet my end? Whoa, 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 what, what are you talking about? I said this is gonna end in a bittersweet way. Wait. Wait, 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 what? I mean, you keep talking about this bittersweet, revolting end or whatever. You keep mentioning about this ending. And I mean, considering that this movie is all about death and it goes into these dark subject matters and- Well, I certainly don't think you're gonna be responding to my text messages after this. And guess what? You're editing the project. I edited the last video. You gotta do this one. This is, this, this is your problem now. I'm done. I took forever to edit the, narrate these lines. You gotta do it. That's, the, 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 it's done. It's all your fault. Oh! Wait, okay, so you mean. <laughs> we can start editing! Let the cycle of depression continue! Is this my chair? Has my life really gone back to normal? Screw it, I'm the one editing this. Whatever problem there is, I'll fix it in post. This is Animat, and I want to start things off by giving out a very, very special thanks to that creepy reading for joining me on this review and to talk about the King of Pigs. And uh, before I continue, I just want to say right now, 
please go and check out that creepy reading on his YouTube channel. His videos are actually incredible and very insightful. And if you are someone who actually is into or have an interest in disturbing media, then this guy covers it all. Like he really goes in depth into many disturbing elements, rather it be video games, animation, movies, TV shows, or whatever. Uh, he really is like the go-to guy for whatever disturbing content that there is out there. Not to mention that he's also a really cool guy in person. So uh, I highly recommend you go and support and check out that creepy reading. Uh, but anyways, um, I, I just want to tell you right now a little bit of a funny story of how this review even came to be because you probably recall a while back me and that creepy reading, we actually did collaborate on a video, uh, well, one of his videos that talks about the most disturbing animated features in which we would go and talk about a lot of very controversial, a lot of very dark, and of course, a lot of very disturbing animated films like uh, The King of Pigs, Plague Dogs, uh, Watership Down, Coonskin, Waltz with Bashir, one of my favorites right there, and uh, several others. And um, while we were working on that review, he was the one who suggested an idea of maybe doing a full-on review of The King of Pigs, like to dedicate an entire video to just talk about this movie. Because out of all of them, in his opinion, he finds that this is the one that is the most disturbing, or at least one of like the top disturbing animated films that we have discussed in that video. And I did think about it for a while, and I figured one day, you know what, I'll go and take his offer, and that's where we are right now. This is how this video got made, and honestly, I am really happy for it. For me personally, it's not every day that I do collab videos, and honestly, after this, I think, yeah, I, I would love to definitely go and do more collabs when uh, the opportunity arises. So, yeah, this was definitely... Uh, a great and fun review to do. Well, okay, maybe not necessarily fun because of the subject matter of what we talked about, but uh, still, I really had a great time uh, doing this uh, collaboration. Okay, so with that said and done, it is now time that we shall go and move on to a Patreon request. And this time around, uh, this is going to be a request from Peyton Michael. So uh, i just like to go and say right now that if you guys would like to be like Peyton and you want to go and support my work and uh, have some awesome rewards at the same time, including but not limited to watching my videos before anyone else, then all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash animat. But at the same time, if you guys would like to suggest an animated film you would like me to review and uh, put onto the animation hat, then all you have to do is write me an email at animatsreviews at gmail.com. So, now that we got King of Pigs out of the way, what is it that uh, Peyton requested me? Is it going to be something that will at least be more pleasant than King of Pigs? Well, from what I've heard about it, I'll say right now that I have yet to actually see it myself, but the answer is no. But this is for a completely different reason. Where King of Pigs is a really good movie, but it's very unpleasant because of the themes and the subject matter that it discusses about. Uh, this movie that I'm going to talk about, well, um, it's unpleasant because it's not a good movie. Even, if, even though it has elements that people do enjoy, like having monkeys and that they're in space, it doesn't sound like a, a pretty fun movie to sit through. And by the way, before anyone says anything, no, I'm not talking about space chimps. I'm talking about the other monkey in space animated movie. This is the most beautiful asphalt and the most beautiful asphalt. The world is the world. 